So Elon Musk has been talking about Grok 5 for the past couple of days and I think it's probably going to be bigger than most people think so I want to do a video talking about why Grok 5 might be a special moment in AI. So one of the things, like I said, you know, Elon Musk has been talking about Grok 5 for the past couple of days. Now, I do want to preface this entire video, not to hate on Elon Musk, but to say that he definitely does really, really believe in his abilities. And to say that sometimes that might lead us to maybe more over optimistic timelines. But I do have to say, so far, Grok 4 has exceeded all expectations on a variety of different benchmarks. Now, you know, the other day, someone tweeted, haters come out now. Grok 4 thinking is way better than GPT-5 high at Arc AGI 2. Now, the reason that that is so surprising is because Arc AGI 2, for starters, is one of the most difficult benchmarks that tests more or, more or less, you know, how humans would reason through a problem. And the fact that Grok 4, you know, which is a system that is arguably, you know, I guess you could say much shorter in terms of the development cycle most people are wondering how on earth did they catch up to and even surpass state-of-the-art systems and towards this tweet elon musk responded and he said grok 5 will be out before the end of this year and it will be crushingly good so this was why a lot of people are now starting to wonder what actually will Grok 5 have? And there are so many different features that I think Grok 5 will have that most people don't realize. So we're going to get into more of that. And one of the things he says here, and I genuinely think that this statement is maybe, maybe a bit over optimistic. I personally don't believe in this statement, but I mean, you can take Elon Musk's word for it. But he says, wait until you see Grok 5. I think it has a shot at being a true AGI. And I haven't felt that about anything before. Now, the reason why I believe that this statement might be a bit overblown is because AGI, as we know it, would most certainly be a system that is made up of several components. I mean, a general intelligent system that is quite like humans. I mean, on the spectrum right now, that is just a broad range of capabilities that even some of the frontier LLMs just currently don't possess. And once I dive through, you know, all of the features that Grok lacks and they're going to add in the future updates, you'll understand why I think Grok 5 actually being an AGI might be a little bit far-fetched, but maybe it will probably be state of the art. And if you guys think I'm just taking one tweet out of the several tweets by Elon Musk, you can see another tweet here where he literally says it has a non-trivial chance of achieving AGI and XAI is very close to having all the pieces in place. So either Elon Musk is tooting his own horn to basically say, look guys, we are very, very nearly there, or it's quite likely that they are working on some key things. They've probably made some key breakthroughs and they are looking forward saying, look, we've already surpassed GPT-5 on some of the most difficult benchmarks. Wait until you see Grok 5 combined with everything. That is gonna be a game changer. So I think it might be 50-50 because breakthroughs are constantly being made. And one thing that definitely did surprise me was the rate at which XAI have moved forward. Now, one of the key videos in which we can see realistically where the you know future future updates are actually going to come was from the live stream. And in this live stream, they do say a few things. And one of the things that they say, you know, and one of the things that I noticed was that Grok 4 is essentially blind. So right now, the multimodal capabilities of Grok 4 are pretty terrible compared to major, major other models. They talk about this in the video. And in the future, they do talk about the fact that they're going to have a video model and, of course, a vision model. And I think it's pretty evident with as to why you would need a good vision model if you're trying to get to AGI. A system that cannot see or process videos won't likely be able to reason about problems the way that humans will. And its world model won't be sufficient. So what is the biggest weakness of Grok currently is that it's partially blind. It can't, it's, it's image understanding obviously in its image generation needs to be a lot better. And that that's actually being trained right now. Four is based on version six of our foundation model and we are training version seven, which will complete in a few weeks. And that'll address the weakness on the vision side. And so the next thing they talk about here is the fact that they're probably going to be increasing the training compute. So they said with Grok 3, it was 10 times out of Grok 2. With Grok 4, it was 10 times out of the previous model. But considering the fact that these models are starting to, you know, reach that kind of S-curve top part, I do wonder if that will be the case because there might have to be I guess you could say more innovative methods in order to, you know, squeeze out a lot of the gains. I think that maybe the scaling, scaling, scaling architecture 
might not work as well. I'm not saying that, you know, things are slowing down. I'm saying that different, you know, levels of innovations, you know, things like HRMs and those other things are probably going to be areas that are going to be more pursued rather than just purely focusing on compute. I mean, compute does work really well, but it will be interesting to see if they can even, you know, manage to handle that. Now, I guess the first part is like, in terms of the training, we're going from Grok 2 to Grok 3 to Grok 4, we've essentially increased the training by an order of magnitude in each case. So it's a uh, hundred times more training than Grok 2, and, uh, and that's only going to increase. So it's, yeah, frankly, I don't know, in some ways a little terrifying, but the growth of intelligence here is remarkable. Another thing that they do say is that Grok 5 will be largely be able to discover new physics. Now, I think this is pretty, pretty crazy because of course, Grok is going to be ludicrously smart. And I think one of the things that most people won't realize is that the AI is going to be smart to the point where the average person won't really need to use it. It's currently the kind of problem that GPT-5 is having right now. The model is so smart that the problems that it is solving and the areas where it's making real progress, the average person isn't going to know. For example, if Grok Five is able to, you know, really push the boundaries on physics benchmarks, you're going to be wondering to yourself, as a normal person, you know, the model's updated from Grok 4 to Grok 5, but you're not going to have seen any improvements in your day-to-day -day life. So I think that's going to be something that's going to be super interesting. Grok 4 is better than PhD level in every subject, no exceptions. Now, this doesn't mean that it's... It, it, times it may lack common sense and it has not yet invented new technologies or discovered new physics but that is just a matter of time if it I think it may discover new technologies as soon as later this year and I would be shocked if it has not done so next year so I would expect Grok to yeah literally discover new technologies that are actually useful no later than next year and maybe end of this year and it might discover new physics next year and within two years, I'd say almost certainly. So just let that sink in. Yeah. <laughs> now, another thing that they do state with Grok is that it will be using more tools. So I'm guessing that, you know, moving towards an agentic future, they are going to have Grok to be using some enterprise tools. They didn't really go into any specific details, but I am guessing that maybe, perhaps, it's possible. That's how good the simulations are. So Grok is not currently using any of the tools, the, the really powerful tools that a company would use, but that is something that we will provide it with later this year. So we'll have the tools that, that a company has and have very accurate physics simulator. I'll, I'll now, of course here, we did get a clear, clear area on where they're moving forward with Grok. One of the key areas that they're gonna be moving forward with is of course the coding model. So I think this one isn't a part of Grok 5, but it will be part of essentially one of its own model. But this is something that I've seen on Twitter so far, and I do wonder how they're gonna be able to actually do this because, you know, right now, you know, even GPT-5 is struggling to take any of that market share from Anthropic. Anthropic are just so good when it comes to producing those coding models. So maybe in the future, maybe, perhaps maybe that is gonna be a model that really, you know, has the edge there. But I don't know, personally, I don't believe that, you know, Grok code is gonna be a good model compared to the Anthropic model. It probably will be relatively good, but you have to understand that that market is really like a winner takes all market. Nobody is gonna use a slightly less better coding model because the bugs that you face are just that bad that you would just think, no, there's no way I'm using this. I would just rather pay more for clawed code because you literally would lose time if you use a worse model. So I think you have to understand that, you know, maybe they are going to improve the coding. But I think what one of the, you know, the clear, clear areas that, you know, I'm seeing, like looking at overall where Grok 5 is probably going to be is the fact that it's going to be like a connector for everything in the Tesla Optimus e ecosystem. So, you know, probably going to provide and connect these LLMs with the Optimus, like Elon Musk said, and there's probably going to be several integrations across his companies. 